Good morning. Today is June 8th, 2020, and this is the Morning Breach with Scott Davis. This morning, I want to begin with the immediate fear of recovering from a ransomware attack. So if your organization is not prepared or if you're not prepared for a cyber attack, the first thing you or your IT team is going to do is to try to find a way to decrypt the data. Because you're not prepared, you don't have backups, you don't have this. Well, the Zorob decryption tool was designed to exploit the ransomware victim's desperation and in turns will actually double encrypt your compromised files, making this bad problem even worse. Pretty scary. On the flip side, Tech Republic got to talk to a CFO of a small company that recently paid the ransom. I recommend you read the full article, go to techrepublic.com, but I can imagine nothing scarier for a business owner than that call at 1030 on a Saturday stating that your business is under attack. In the end, this business owner worked with his IT team and insurance agent to pay $150,000, which was down from the initial demand of $400,000 in Bitcoins. They even offered an 800 number support line if the company had any issues recovering any files. But as a business owner, highly recommend you take a look at that article on Tech Republic. And if that article doesn't make you think about taking cybersecurity threats seriously, and building a plan for the unexpected, then I don't know what will. Paying the ransom should always be the last solution on the table because there's never a guarantee it will work. And on the other hand, educating your staff on the latest cyber threats, having the right security stack in place, and maintaining an organization incident response plan, business continuity and disaster recovery plan, and a data breach notification plan is cheaper, less, less expensive, and just a better plan. If you're not sure how to get started, ask your IT team or reach out to me in a message or comment below. So let's transition now into some recent reported cyber attacks. We're going to begin with the Japanese car giant Honda. They could be the latest victim of ransomware as the eCans malware, which targets industrial control systems in factories and ultimately demands payment to open them back up. The attack was detected early Monday morning by security software that actually tracks ransomware as it spreads across the internet. As of yet, there has not been an official announcement by Honda, so I look to learn more as that announcement comes out. The Maze Ransomware Group has claimed ST Engineering's aerospace subsidiary VT San Antonio Aerospace as its latest victim. ST Engineering claims that the ransomware only impacted the San Antonio location and its other businesses and networks were not compromised or impacted. So that's good. Um, the San Francisco Employees Retirement System or SFERS, SFERS, has admitted it became a victim of a data breach, which exposed information of roughly 74,000 beneficiaries, including their names, addresses, birth dates, banking information, IRS data, and more. It appears the breach occurred where an unauthorized third party accessed the database hosted by SFERS vendor 10UP Inc. within a test environment. And we'll get back to that here in a minute. Finally, the Fitness Depot notified its customers that their personal and financial information, including names, addresses, contact information, and credit card numbers, were accessed through what is known as a MAG card attack, M A G E C A R T. This type of attack involves a hack of an e-commerce store's checkout page where malicious code is inserted and routes the data to a third party while also processing the order legitimately. So to the end customer, they don't know any different. It appears that any customers that use the site between February 18th, 2020 and May 20th, 2020 could have been breached. So from misconfigured systems misconfigured test databases, hacked shopping carts, ransomware, phishing emails, 
there's no shortage of cyber attacks, cyber attacks in the wild. And even worse, I'm not even mentioning all of the ones that get reported and come across, you know, my feed. Like I said earlier, it's critical for your business to plan for an attack and ultimately know what the processes and procedures are when and if an attack hits your organization. So today, I wanna to leave you with a topic we discussed previous, previously, which is the security process, process called air gapping. Air gapping is the technique of isolating certain systems by keeping them disconnected from the public internet or your public networks. There is new evidence that hackers are working together and designing malware and tools that infiltrates these networks. So like I reported earlier, it is starting to be a trend and we're starting to see it. Well, a new tool was discovered called USB culprit that is designed to infect your USB and then move to these systems and identifying what an air gap system is and ultimately beginning to identify how then to move it back to USBs to move it you know, to a system that is connected to the internet. So there's a lot of different things that is going on um, and it's definitely these air gap systems were considered the gold standard as far as, you know, protecting your data, protecting the network. So if hackers, uh, cyber attackers really find a way to infiltrate, you know, this hidden network, then it's, you know, definitely questions that whole gold standard there. So as always, if you learn something new by watching this, please take a few seconds, like, share the video. If you want to see more episodes of The Morning Breach, please follow, connect, subscribe. And as always, let me know what your thoughts are. This is constantly evolving. It's constantly growing. And I appreciate you for taking the time to watch it. So again, thank you for watching. And I will see everybody back here on Tuesday, June 9th. Take care.